everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Atheist Apostate, back here with BAA, and we are back here with another rebuttal, yep, another rebuttal. So not one I originally wanted to start these cha this channel out uh, with, but Saints Unscripted, you are on my radar and you're going to be getting to know my name very quickly. The Atheist Apostate BAA. I have watched over a dozen of your videos. So over a dozen of them now. So I found issues with every single one. You are no better at whitewashing and being dishonest about the information you're giving. I am all about transparency. Not against members of the church. I'm for transparency. These guys do not give the transparency. Sean S, thank you for bringing this video to my attention because I was planning on a CES video. I was. So, no if, ands, or buts. So, this was going to happen. This is the CES letter uh, website. So, this is their website. So, the claim of no response. Why can't I get this to go larger for me? There we go. No response ever came is correct. So this is their CS. This is their claim. You'll see why I'm showing this. Because we are coming on over here to Saints on Scripted. Yes, we are. Hey, script, or Saints on Scripted. Welcome to the AA show. Let's hear what these guys have to say. Hey guys, so we've gotten a few messages recently asking us if we know about this document that's been floating around called the CES letter. Well, obviously... Yes, yes we do. Let yes, yes you do. You know of it. Do you actually know what's in it? The question is, do you know what's in it? I left the church way before the CES letter ever came out. So I started getting back into the LDS Mormon politics just after this letter came out. So I was fresh on the scene as this was coming out and yeah, I know what's in it. I've gone over it. I followed the whole thing live as it was going. I followed it. I was there for this. So I'm not sure if he was or he just picked this up afterwards because I can tell you already he's full of crap from what I've watched already. So I got halfway through it. I won't lie, I got halfway through, stopped, and I was like, oh, okay, let's just do the last of this ad hoc like I did their last video. So let's see what this guy has to say. Let's talk about it. Yes, yes, let's talk about it. Let's do her. In February of 2012. Faith beliefs. Faith beliefs. Faith uh, crusher. Let's move my ashtray here to a better location so you guys don't get the smoke coming out your way and blurring out my background. All right, so let's get on to Jeremy Reynolds. Well, the Latter-day Saint named Jeremy Reynolds was experiencing a faith crisis. He ran into things mostly about church history that he hadn't heard before. That Not just mainly church history. A lot of it is focal on church history. Most of it is. It rattled his testimony. By summertime, he no longer believed in the truth claims of the church. The next year, Jeremy's Latter-day Saint grandfather put him in contact with a friend who worked for the church education system. Okay, let's be honest here. It wasn't a friend <clears throat> that worked for the uh, CES system, the church educational system. Let's be honest. Church educational system, that's what CES stands for church educational system and it was the current then current director of CES that he was put into contact with and we have the proof and the evidence coming up system he was a CES director the CES director Excuse asked me. Jeremy to send him a list of issues that had caused him to lose his faith with the intention of helping him out Jeremy's response was an 84 page document that came to be known as the CES letter Yes, it was the original letter that was written to the CES director was 80 some pages long. 
after a period of time where the CES director refused to acknowledge the letter and respond back to it, it has grown over time. So yes, it has. No if, ands, or buts. No lie in there. The CES director apparently never got around to responding. Jeremy. That is correct. And it's right on their own page. So let's minimize this for a second. Let's go back to CES letters. After reading Jeremy's letter, the director promised him a response. Let's go back. See, after, after reading Jeremy's letter, the director promised him a response. A n no response ever came. And we're just going to go down and see the same stuff that, you know, uh, this guy is looking at here. So, just so we can see, you know, let's follow him along. Let's follow him along here, see what he has to say to this. We made the letter available online. It has since been updated for a public audience. The yes, it has. Let's, let's, let's not, you know, uh, here it is. Here's what he's talking about. So let's go down. This is the whole uh, site. Here is testimonials of people who were questioning that came back and uh, read on it. So here is some former Mormon historians who reviewed it. So, though well, I'm not seeing his two-point, uh, let's see, if I go and hit the HTML, will I get, op okay, yeah, so updated on October 2017. So, it shows he hasn't been on here in a while, uh, this gentleman. Not a big deal, it's not a big deal, I'm not calling him out for not being on there for a bit, but have you, Saints Unscripted? Say it's unscripted. Have you actually gone and read that material or did you just do what I did, clicked on the page and just scrolled for the viewers so they could see that the page? I've read everything. I've been on the page. I know what's in there. So I endorse it. Full document is now 138 pages and now the letter is no longer about getting answers from the LDS church. Okay, so yeah, 217. I didn't notice that last time. So this is a recent, uh, he has recently been on there. The purpose of the CES letters is no longer about getting answers from the LDS Church. Correct. It's not. It's not any longer. The Church had their opportunity to respond. The Church had their opportunity. The Church refused to. The CES, Church Educational System uh, Director, had his opportunity after he told this gentleman here to uh, present his grievances. This director probably expected him to think it was someone offended him or it was some little incidency uh you know issue that was easily resolved and he did not expect to be hit with all this so and i got hit with all this 10 years prior to this ever coming out church but rather to call attention to this information that he claims the church does not want its members and investigators to know they don't want their the church investigators to know they don't want church members. So this is why I'm doing this video here. Not only do they not want church members to know, they have on byu.edu, on fairlatterdaysaints.org, they have a lot of this information they tell their members is wrong. They have a lot of this information they tell their members is incorrect on their own websites, between the fair and the BYU website. And if you go to my last video where I, uh, come after these guys on the FLDS versus LDS on polygamy, you will see uh, that the church, they say it's false and it's wrong and they give you a alternative history, but it's not even the same what the church admits because the church admits to this stuff, just not where the regular member can see it. The church doesn't deny half the stuff. They whitewash it. Yes, they whitewash it. They don't deny it. And long story short, it's caused some people to leave the church. Now, in a past episode, I mentioned that it's extremely hard to find unbiased information. No, it's not hard to find unbiased information. There is a lot out there. The number one source of unbiased information is FAIR and BYU. So, because if you read their articles on their explanations, it is horseshit. It is so obvious that my eight-year-old would be going... This doesn't make sense, Daddy. What, what do you mean, Daddy? Daddy, I need more answers because this is rubbish. My eight-year-old would be saying that. There are tons of experts out there. People who left the church because of doctrinal and historical issues. Not because they were offended. Not because they wanted to sin. Because they came across the same information that I did. I didn't leave the church because I wanted to sin. I didn't leave the church because I wanted to be bad. I didn't leave the church because of what anyone offended me.
So I was the type of Mormon. I didn't care if I got offended. For me, it wasn't the members of the church that mattered. It was the gospel. So the members weren't the gospel. The gospel was the gospel. I didn't care what you thought of me as a member because what you thought of me as a member didn't matter to me as a member. What Jesus and God thought of me when I believed in Jesus and God when I was a believer, that's what mattered to me when I was in the LDS church. So Grant Palmer, John Dowell, and uh, Brian uh, De Delane, or no, John Delane, Brian Dallin. So Grant Palmer, there is so many great resources out there. Dan Bogle, these are guys who were all members of the church who all left either on their own accord or the church excommunicated, uh, say for John uh, Delane, he was excommunicated for being pro-LGBT and coming out to their defense on his show. Before that, the church never went after John Delane because John Delane never said anything that the church uh, found too offensive and they didn't want to touch him. But as soon as he touched the LGBT community and went against Prop 8, so they excommunicated him. They did. He didn't leave because he was offended. He's a, he was a true believer. So he had problems with stuff in the church. He had issues with stuff in the church, but he was still a believing member. So this is just propaganda. So let's go back and listen to this. What sources can you trust? So he's telling you, if it's not LDS sources, if it's anything but LDS sources, you can't trust them. Rubbish, rubbish. That's like American history saying, well, if it's not from American history book, we can't accept it. If, if another country said something different, we can't accept it because it's not in our history books. So it might be contrary to what we say extremely hard to find unbiased information about the church because most all of the people that care about doing the research are people with some kind of investment in the interpretation of that research. Yeah, you guys, you guys. When I do my videos, when I do my videos, I present fairs uh, uh, side as well. I give you both sides of the video. So uh, the uh, uh, story. I don't just give you one side. This is what on, or Saints Unscripted does. They give you one side because to them, that's all that matters is to prove their side. I, I give you two sides. I give you the secular, which is non-Mormon uh, official history. And then I go and I give you the uh, rebuttal from the LDS Mormon side. Am I biased? Do I have an agenda? I sure do have an agenda, but it's not biased. My agenda is being transparent. My agenda is countering people like you who are not transparent, who deceive, who whitewash, who only give one side of the story and present one side of the story and then bear their testimony. I don't do that. I'm a reliable source. I give you both sides and let you guys decide. Saints Unscripted, you are disgusting in your claim. Disgusting. Hang your head in shame. Hang your head in shame. For better or worse. The CES letter is no exception. Jeremy is very clear about where he stands in the introduction to the letter. Obviously, I'm a disaffected member who lost his testimony, so it's no secret which side I'm on. Yeah, he's like me. I'm on the side of transparency. I'm on the side of, of exposing the whitewashing and the lies and the omissions that the church has omitted to its members that it has not omitted to the public. So, like on polygamy, when I dealt with them on my last video on polygamy, I showed you where the church even said that John Taylor started to change the uh, direction of polygamy based on pol politics, not on revelation, on politics. From BYU's own website, your own source, your own truth source. So buddy, go back to school, do your homework, don't be biased and don't try to push your agenda, your agenda. You claim we have an agenda, you have an agenda, and it's deceitful, dishonest, and fucking disgusting. Disgusting. I'm not going to lie, it is absolutely disgusting, buddy. The moment. Thus, those who read the letter should not be expecting to find reasons to believe. In spite. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. So, on CS Letters, when you run uh, through CS Letters, and it doesn't matter what you go through. Book of Mormon, the uh, King, John, King James error. So let's go over here. Let's pop this up a bit bigger for you guys. So these are the issues at hand. 
So these are all issues of hand. These are asking questions. So they give you quotes. Ezra Taft Benson, they quote. <clears throat> And then they go on and tell you the problems they discovered. They go on to tell you the problems they discovered, the problems they wanted answered originally in the 80-some page original document. So once that was uh, ignored by the church, by the CES director, so then it became not questioning, but showing everyone. So obviously the answer from the CES and the church was, yes, what you discovered was true. Yes, we cannot defend it. Yes, there is no defense. So I went from a questioning thing like I did with my bishop and stake president when I went to go and ask for uh, answers because I came across a lot of this stuff and I needed answers. And I was told to stop researching or I was going to be called before church court and face excommunication. So that is when I turned around and I started doing more research. I started more research to see what else they were hiding. What else after that? I was devastated. I was heartbroken over this. Devastating, heartbroken, I needed to know. And as soon as I knew, I wanted to share it with others so they knew. So they knew. Not to break their spirit, not to break their testimony, not to, you know, uh, destroy them. So so they knew the same thing I came across. So they can make their own decision. So they can make their decision if they were going to stay or not based off of what I had discovered. This is no different. And I'm going to actually... I'm actually, let's go to the CES narrative. Oh, actually, let's go to a video from the uh, church here. Let's go and find my video. I think that's great. Uh, I, I think that uh, whitewashing history is, is not ideal. Uh, holding up some of the past individuals, placing them on the pedestals is not ideal. Okay, this is in rebuttal. <clears throat> this is in rebuttal, guys. One of the rebuttals coming from um, uh, Mark Jensen, who is a uh, church historian apologist, addressing this based on the CES. This is, you know, you're one of your paid church leaders. So addressing this. So talking about the whitewashing, talking about place, placing people like Brigham Young and Joseph Smith on pedestals when you guys know that they had a shady and dirty past. Come on, come on, Saints Unscripted. Come on. Here, let's go to the, uh, some of the church leaders for a moment. Let's go. Some struggle with unanswered questions about things that have been done or said in the past. We openly acknowledge... Oh, come on. Because the energy is all around us, you can... ...acknowledge that in nearly 200 years of church history, along with an uninterrupted line of... Here, let's go back to Diedrich here and not get interrupted by that, uh, that break. We openly acknowledge that in nearly 200 years of church history, <laughs> along with an uninterrupted line of inspired, honorable, and divine events, there have been some things said and done that could cause people to question. Did you guys hear that? This was the last prophet of your, the LDS church. This was a prophet, not just a, uh, at the time when he was a general authority, he became a prophet, seer, and revelator of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and took over the title as president. Let's go back and hear what he admits to. Admits to. And this is dealing... Guys, this is dealing. These are things that the CES letter is dealing with. The CES letters, myself, this is why we are doing this stuff because of this been some things said and done that could cause people to question yes there has been things said and done that can cause people to question you guys are admitting to it this is why you came out with fair so fair is the apologetic branch of the lds church and let me make this straight and clear for you guys who are non-scholarly so apologetics doesn't mean i'm saying sorry for something and they're there to say i'm sorry apologetics in history and in religion is a group of people that defend, rebuttal. They give explanations. They don't say sorry for it. They're not just saying sorry for it. They're telling you their version of it. It's called apologetics. So, and the church has a branch of, call of uh, apologetic branch they pay for called FAIR, F-A-I-R. And to be perfectly frank, 
There have been times when members or leaders in the church have simply made mistakes. Simply made mistakes. And all you're doing is justifying it. Oops, we made mistakes. Okay, we'll admit it. We made some mistakes. So those mistakes happen to be major. They happen to impact your internal salvation if you believe in that. Because what we taught you, those mistakes were important core doctrinal teachings. And you find those all in the CES letter. There may have been things said or done that were not in harmony with our values, principles, or doctrine. There may have. He's sidestepping it. Well, we may have stole some cookies. I'm not saying we stole the cookies. We may have stole the cookies. Well, I, you know, I, I don't want you knowing I stole the cookies, because if I told you I stole the cookies outright, I admit it, I stole those cookies, Mommy and Daddy are going to slap my hands, or my brother and my sister are going to get pissed off at me because I stole the cookies, so, and I wasn't supposed to, and I lied about stealing the cookies. Let's go back and listen to a now former prophet. Principles in harmony with our values. Let's go back. That were not in harmony with our values. Not in harmony with our values. There may have been things said or done that were not in harmony with our values, principles, or doctrine. I think we... Or doctrine. Or doctrine. This is a general authority at the time, a future president of the church, leader of the church, head leader of the church, openly admitting, oh, we may have lied and done stuff not in accordance with the church teachings and doctrines that we preach. Oh, heavens forbid. Saints unscripted. Oh, oh, saints unscripted. You're in trouble. I tell you, I don't do any of this to be malicious. I'm not against the members of the church. I'm against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints leadership itself because of comments like that from their leadership that the everyday common member does not know about. So they deny things to the common member and threaten them with uh, disfellowship or excommunication or church probation when they question if they don't accept the standard core belief. And yet we have Dietrich here, a former general authority and former prophet of the church. So maybe he is the current. I, I haven't checked to see who the current prophet is uh, for a bit. Maybe he still is the current prophet. I'll have to check that out. Point being, he even comes out and admits, oh, we have been liars and deceitful and went against our own doctrine. Firing belief was never the purpose of the letter. But what? So let's go back on the purpose of the letter after you just heard. To believe. So, and you just heard Dietrich say, we kind of did what we are being accused of. So you heard that from Dietrich out of his own mouth. I'm on at the moment. Thus, those who read the letter should not be expecting to find reasons to believe. Inspiring belief was never the purpose of the letter. But what? No, it was the purpose of the letter. It became something different after the church denied it. So it denied the claims in there, denied the statements in there by not, by not responding. And you're going to see a rebuttal against them claiming against here, and we have defense against that rebuttal by the church. What topics does the letter actually bring up? Yeah, what, what, what topics? Because he said none of it's really, you know, trying to ask questions about the church, but attack the church. The document is divided into 13 chapters, <coughs> minus the conclusion, source notes, and epilogue, that each focus on a different category of... So, Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon translation, First Vision, the Book of Abraham, Polygamy. We just covered the issue on polygamy. Did I go after the members of the church for polygamy? No, I went after John Taylor and Wilfred Woodruff because the church itself says that John Taylor started the works to change polygamy so they could gain statehood. He did this before 1890. In 1890, Wilfred Woodruff gave the proclamation to change the doctrine of polygamy so they could get statehood. This is on BYU.org. Go check my other video on FLDS versus LDS, uh, de uh, debunking, rebuttaling these guys. And I show you the church's own statement on what I'm saying. So this is all this letter does, is they do the same thing that I was doing. 
they brought up topics. They brought up issues that they saw that, they saw that there were concerns, Jeremy. He presented it to the CS director who uh, asked him to present them to him and got no response. I got a response. My response for my bishop and my stake president was what a lot of other people get. Stop doing your research, which my research at the time was through church books in the church library. It was all church history volumes and past books written by prophets and general authorities. But I was told to stop, accept the milk and honey of the church, or I would be called to church disciplinary action and face possible excommunication. That's what I was threatened with. And yes, I call it threatened. And all I was doing was the same thing as what um, Jeremy was doing here. So there's nothing else that this is about. And you can go. You can go to CES Letters, their website, and you can see what I'm saying is true and what uh, on script, or Saints on Script is saying is crap. Check for yourself various issues. None of the issues brought up in these chapters are new, though some may be new to you. Many criticisms are several decades old. Some even date back to literature critical of the church from Joseph Smith's own era. Yes. Yes, correct. Well, most of this is not new. For most of the history of the church up to the last 15 years, uh, not even 15 years, more 10 years, the church has lied about this and said it never happened or that the stories were twisted and warped I know, I experienced it. Now they're coming out and admitting to a lot of the stuff that they denied. Stuff that they used to deny, they're now coming out to admitting to the whitewashed. And this is why I'm on here, because I can't stand whitewashing. I'm all about transparency and letting you guys, you guys make your decision. I don't care if you're LDS. I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're a friggin' alien. As long as you don't try to force your religion upon me, as long as you don't try to force your religion upon the uh, government that I live in, our school structure, I don't care what your religious belief is. It doesn't impact me in one which way. The only way it impacts me is when it's tried to be forced upon me or the government that I live in, which is a secular government. So same with the United States. I'm Canadian. The United States has the same thing. I don't care what religion you are. What I care about is you know the truth of what you believe. So if you want to accept that and continue on, that's your choice. That's your choice, guys, literally. It's your choice. But the CES letter essentially distills all of the main criticisms against the church into one publicly available online document. Yeah. Yes, because the CES um, director asked him to compile all his uh, concerns and send it to him. The CES director had no clue in the world what he was about to get hit with. And that's why he went silent and mute, because he thought it was just going to be petty little things that the church is able to dismiss on a daily basis. And it wasn't. It went from questions on answers that he wanted to a document of, well, I didn't get the answers to these concerns. Here's my concerns. I didn't get the answers to them. Here you guys go. If you want to know the same and you have the same concerns, here's my stuff. Same my thing I'm doing here. Same thing. It's no different than what uh, Saints Unscripted is doing. It's no different. The only thing is, is he's trying to make his case with strictly LDS material. So, and not looking at the counter side. He's not making any. We are almost halfway through, or uh, just over a quarter way through this video, and he has not made one valid point. I don't know if he's actually read the CES letters and gone over it as a critical review. He doesn't have to accept it, but if he's going to comment on, comment on it, read it with a critical uh, review. I've gone back and read the Book of Mormon three times now as a critical review. So, I, I, you know, why can't he? So why? Because he's scared. Ooh, you scared. Scared, scared, scared. If you're interested in more than the critical viewpoint, there are also plenty of Latter-day Saint resources that explore these issues. For example, if you're familiar with the Faith and Belief segment of Saints Unscripted, you're probably already familiar with a good portion of what Oh, I'm familiar with some of those. That's what I started with and how I got it on your, or you were on my radar. This was a series I came across by accident and I was like, oh, interesting. A Mormon willing to take on the topic. Wow, bravo. I actually subscribed to Saints Unscripted at first because I thought here's an honest Latter-day Saint given transparency and what did I come across? Not transparency whitewashing horrible explanations and whitewashing 
So the church gives better explanations. Fair gave better explanations, and Fair is the apologetic branch. My one video I did already debunking their last video, FLDS versus LDS, just one topic I went at, just one topic. I disproved this channel wrong with LDS material, LDS source. The source material that he's telling you guys is available out there as well. BYU.edu, guys. BYU.edu. That's Brigham Young University, owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Their university, their doctrine being taught there. Yes, it is. Fair. F-I-R. Latter-day Saints.org is the LDS Church Apologetic Branch's website. That's where they are giving you the answers. So the rebuttals to my side's claims, claims to our side's answers. So <clears throat> what is blood atonement? That is going to be our next one on here. I've already, I've done his Book of Abraham ones. So I've done his Mark, Mark Hoffman because uh, that's what I was actually uh, getting ready for is I was going to be doing the... Uh, Joseph Smith, uh, Moroni vision, and uh, the finding of the plates, and I wanted to bring up the Mark Hoffman documents, and yes, the Mark Hoffman documents are, yes, they are forgeries. No, they are not real. The Salamander documents are forgeries. So, upright forgeries, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints did not know that at the time. They bought the documents believing they were legit. And that's why Hoffman kept on producing the forgeries. We will cover that twice. We're going to cover this in true LDS history when we hit the 1980s, because we're going all the way from Joseph Smith up to today. We are going all the way up to today in true Mormon histories, because things have uh, kept on changing. And today is the LGP, uh, LGD, LGBT issue within the church and mass resignation. So things have not stopped from the start of the church to today. So, and this is their, this is their, I'm talking Saints on Scripted, so this is Saints on Scripted. Hey, we're going to promote ourselves as one of your resource sites. No, no, stay away from these guys unless you want to see the differences between what Fair says and what they say. Go to Fair. Fair is your official church's rebuttal site. They are your official apologists paid by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Go to them. So, because that's who we're rebutting, that's who we are rebuttaling, is we're rebuttaling fair in the church. I'm going after this guy because this guy is the biggest guy out there who's not fair and he's given disinformation. I hate disinformation. So, don't give disinformation. Be transparent. Be honest. Let you guys uh, choose. Let you guys decide off the information that you are discovering that we know about. Don't whitewash it. Be transparent. Saints unscripted the letter brings up. And if you want to watch some of our videos that happen to cover some of the same topics as the CES letter, feel free to check out this playlist. Oh, here, look at that. We're going to promo our channel. We're going to promo our channel. Oh my God, he's disgusting me. Honestly, this to me is him self-promoting. This isn't him trying to, you know, uh, be transparent. This is him trying to get more freaking subs, man. This is just disgusting, man. Ah, oh, kills me. Okay, I want to show something else because this is a problem that's going on in the church. So this isn't something also new. Know. Like he said, this isn't something that, you know, is brand new to the church. This is something that's been going on for a long time. There has been mass migrations in the church every uh, few decades because of members finding out things. The church is now trying to become transparent and we're going to be seeing clips where the church knows it's going to be losing members and trying to soften the blow. So let's watch this. This is a church member. And also know that for some people... Cade Holbrook, September 28, Worldwide Devotional for Young Adults. So a young woman leader. Young women's organization leader, Cade Holbrook. Well, like the person who asked that question... It okay, let's go back here. Question. Let's go well, back. Like the person who asked that question, it can be really painful to learn about something that you thought you should have known and that you didn't know okay did you guys hear that it is painful learning something you thought you knew but you didn't know this is why the church is trying to come out with fair now because they're trying to come out with the truth while whitewashing it and defending themselves they're trying to 
what they call transparent instead of just being truthful about it so they are trying to whitewash it this gentleman here saints unscripted he is being even worse so his justifications he's avoiding problems here he's avoiding issues uh this is rough i stopped before this i stopped way before this and decided to ad hoc so i don't know if he's going to come and uh, try to debunk um so uh debunk the uh, gentleman who did cs uh ces um uh, uh letters so but he, when he did his letters and let's go where is it sorry here uh, can i go down where did i lose it god i hate losing crap okay let's okay that's not the page i want this isn't what i want oh because i went was yeah this is why i lost my original page here so let's go i'm going to flip over here with you guys let's go to debunking so this is ces letters so this is dealing with guys like uh, saint unscripted and the church apologists so lds historians and scholars admit that the lds church has a truth crisis i showed you that video the prophet of the church one of the prophets of the church dietrich admit it you watched him i have it here go back to the beginning and watch it he has admitted to it so here's the next video we're going to be seeing too. Common attacks and lies about Jeremy Reynolds and the CES letter. This is what we're dealing with right now with Saints Unscripted is he's propagating a lie and we're going to show why. So where is, uh, okay, so let's go to the FAIR response. This is FAIR Institute. Come on, where's my, there we go. Debunkings, I get, okay. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Yeah, see, I don't know why it is when I maximize screens that we end up having issues with uh, losing content. That drives me crazy. I hate when that happens. So let's go down here. So Jeremy says, no, I'm pro-truth, pro-information pro consent. So am I. I don't want to dissuade you one way or another. I just wanted to give you the transparent information and allow you, allow you guys to do the uh, decision here. Let's go here. I'm going to scroll down, find where, because they are rebuttaling here. One of the uh, things is they're going to claim that Jeremy was excommunicated from the church and he actually provides his letter are you still a member no i resigned my membership during my kangaroo court in april 2016. jeremy was excommunicated it was is what the church claims the church claims they excommunicated him no i was not excommunicated i resigned my membership here is jeremy's letter so there is his letter if it's on there you can go down so you can go and read his exit letter <clears throat> okay i'm trying to find the when they start attacking me okay here it was sorry contrary to what apologists say about me i didn't dedicate or decide one day to write the cs letters and put it out there on the internet to destroy tender mormon testimonies so let's see if i can get this a bit bigger so the ces director approached me first and we got verification of this. We got verification because the church tries to say that, that no one from the uh, CES approached him, that he's using this as a claim. So I don't know if uh, Skane's unscripted is going to go here, but we're going to establish Jeremy's reputation and Jeremy's honesty right here before we go any further. So seeing a glimmer of hope that he might have official answers that, we, or that were better than the unofficial Mormon apologetic crap I was frustrated with, the same stuff that was frustrating me, I went to my leaders, I went to my leaders for the same reason, and I got threatened with excommunication. That didn't offend me. That did not offend me. That confirmed to me that they had no answers. At first, at first when I came to them, I thought maybe they just didn't know. No, they just didn't know the information I was presenting them. So... You guys can go here. He talks about sharing his draft uh, to, on uh, Reddit to see if anyone... Uh, uh, or, uh, okay, I wanted feedback to assure that it was as accurate as it could be so that I didn't waste the director's time or mine. 
I spent months taking books out of the library before I would go each time out of the church library. So church history, uh, church books that were uh, by prophets and apostles. So <clears throat> I went and I took those out because I wanted to do the same and make sure I wasn't confused and what I brought to the, my leader was as accurate as I could so I could get as accurate as answers as I could. So Fair, so Fair started to attack me. They made a lot of false claims. So they made, yes they did. I remember this, I remember this. I'm putting the link down here in the description. The link will be down here in the description. Please scroll down, find that section, and read it, members. Members who are watching this, read it. This is what this gentleman here, this gentleman here is someone who is a witness to reading the emails. So Jeremy had kept the emails from the CES director. He had kept them and when the church started making claims that he made up the CES director and that he made up the uh, uh, claims of why he was doing this, they were false. Jeremy had someone who was able to go and read the emails and to authenticate that there was an email chain and emails from the CES director. So this is the smoking gun against the church. This is what the church claims was false, that never happened. And here's someone who saw the emails themselves, a reputable person from the church. The emails, and I finally said, look, wouldn't this be more fun over burgers? I'm buying. And that completely disarmed him. And then he was like, oh yeah, okay, sure. And when we met up, uh, we spent three hours together. And it could have been longer if we didn't have to leave. Uh, but it was just delightful. I just thought, this guy's a great guy. This is a member of the church. This is a, uh, a, a prominent member of the church. This isn't a um, non-member. So, and he is finding Jeremy a very nice, polite guy. No issues with him. He's not aggressive. He's not violent. He's not a, uh, in attack mode with this gentleman. And he, uh, he came and had a very similar experience <laughs> to my own experience. But, uh, you know, he reached out to somebody who didn't respond. He reached out to somebody who didn't respond when he had a faith crisis. So when he had his faith crisis. He reached out to the CES, let, CES director who didn't respond to him. And you can confirm that he did. And I can confirm. So, I, I know. Tell, tell the audience what we did. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Jeremy, Jeremy, a couple of weeks ago asked us to get together and confirm that there really was a CES director. So I sat in this room and I looked at his emails and read the whole exchange. Uh, I, I can identify the CES letter, CES director. He's asked me not to say who it is. <coughs> the CES director does not want to be known. So he's embarrassed by this. So he thought he was getting an insy tinsy little, you know, uh, uh, issue of concern. Oh, someone must have offended him. Oh, he must have heard Joseph Smith use some peeper stones, and we can easily explain that away. And they try to, the church tries to. So they actually justify it on fair. They justify it. They don't even whitewash it. They justify it. Yes, they do. They justify it. They admit to it and justify it. And this CES director is a bit off more than he could chew, and everyone's protecting him. I don't know why Jeremy and the church is protecting him. He called out Jeremy. He told Jeremy to give him this stuff. He he ghosted Jeremy and left him hanging. Left him hanging. I would not be protecting him. If I asked Jeremy, I would not be protecting him. Jeremy's too nice of a guy. The church wants to protect him because the church doesn't want people going and talking and trying to interview him. So everyone is trying to protect him and for different reasons. Out of kindness. Out of right? kindness. To, to respect the guy. And that, that's what... Out of kindness. He, Jeremy's trying to uh, protect him out of kindness because he knows that he's going to get that CES director or our former director now will get flooded, will get flooded with uh, interview requests and that's why the church is protecting him. So come on, let's be honest here, Saints is unscripted about the whole freaking situation. What's amazing to me is, is, that, is that Jeremy doesn't gain anything by not yeah. throwing this guy under the bus. Right, but he gets skewered for... But, but he gets skewered all the... But he gets skewered. Jeremy's not selling this. Jeremy is not selling CES letters. He's not making the money off of this. So CES letters, let's go all the way back up here because I screwed which page I was up. CES letters, get the book. Get the book. 
Not you guys. That's what it says. Get the book right here. Get the book. CES letters. Oh, you can buy the hardcover. You can buy the hardcover. So, but if you want the PDFs, if you want to read it, if you want to read it, free downloads. This is if you don't have the money, if you don't want to copy on your shelf. And I don't blame Jeremy. You know what? He has to pay for the uh, uh, cost of uh, printing, the cost of a book. But if you are like me, and when I read this, I was financially strapped. I was married, five kids, barely getting by with a family of five. It's expensive in Canada for a family of five. I couldn't afford to buy that in order and pay the shipping and handling. So you know what I did? I came over to here and I downloaded the, uh, I didn't get the, uh, I downloaded the PDF. Uh, free, free. Jeremy doesn't make money off this if you want to. You can read it. He doesn't make money off this. He's offered this for free because he has no investment. He's not here to sell a thousand or million books and become an author. He just wants this information out there to be transparent. So let's pop up on say it's unscripted here. So just so you know, there's uh, there's sources out there. The information, the email chain is out there for this. This wasn't some mysterious, you know, just out of the blue project. This has an email chain from the CES uh, director. You've also got resources like the church's new history volumes, Saints, the Gospel Topics Essays, BYU Studies, the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Let's go here. Come on. Saints. Volumes, Saints, the Gospel oh. Topics Essays, BYU Studies. Yes, the Gospel Topic Essays. Most members don't even know about it. The church has openly talked about it. You guys need to go find it. I'm not pro-Mormon. I'm not pro-LDS church. I, I, I love the members. My best friend's a member of the church. I love her dearly. I'm, I, I, I encourage you guys. I do. I literally encourage you guys. Go to FAIR. I will put FAIR's main website down there. I will put BYU's uh, dot edges uh, site. This is BYU. This is the site that I used. This is was the site I used my last video, which I'll link at the end, FLDS versus uh, LDS and polygamy. This is the site that I used. I didn't use any outside sources. I didn't use any anti-sources. Saints Unscripted. I did what you said. I did what you said to for your followers, your members, your subscribers. I used BYU Studies. Thank you, BYU, because you actually contradicted what Saints Unscripted's other two hosts were saying, and you were a lot more transparent and honest about it. Thank you, BYU Studies, for your honesty and transparency. Even though the last three words at the end of the sentence kind of was a whitewash justification, you at least admitted transparently to it. Saints Unscripted lied about it. They lied about it. Go watch my video on it and you'll see why. And all I do is use byu.org or .edu. Saints on scripted. Be careful what you're saying here, buddy. I encourage your viewers to go to fair, latterdaysaints.org. I'll put the link down there. I encourage you to go to byu.edu. I'll put the link down there. I will put the link down there to the Mormon essays. I want you guys to go read it. I want you to. I want you to see what they say. And uh, if you're watching here, you'll know what I'm saying is true. So you'll, you'll see the difference. You'll see it. I don't do this to try to fool you or deceive you or to make money. I'm not making, my channel's not monetized. I, if you go and look, I have no monetization on my channel. I'm not monetizing it because I'm not here to make money. So I'm here to be transparent. I don't care if you leave the church members of the church. Investigators, I don't care if you join the church. I want you joining based off of the information that's transparent. If you want to join, that's up to you. Members of the church, if you want to stay in the church, you stay based off the of transparency uh, information. Doesn't bother me one bit. Just, just be transparent about what's going on from the other side. It's the Encyclopedia of Mormonism, or the Joseph Smith Papers Project. There are also countless excellent non-official sources you can check out. The C Excellent non-official. Non-official. That means 
Mormon authors, Mormon authors who were not, their books are not approved by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as speaking on their behalf. So that's what he's talking about. So authors and channels like himself, that's what he's talking about. Let's be honest. Those He's not talking about people like myself or John Delane or uh, Brian Dowlin or Grant Palmer. You know, he's talking about the Mormon apologists and secondary authors who have their own independent books. Let's be honest. The ES letter makes hundreds upon hundreds of claims. Whether They're not claims. They are not claims. They are making factual statements. So the church just refused to recognize and give a defense of them. So that you can find on FAIR and BYU Ed and that you can. We just, we don't even need to tell you. The church admits to them. They just whitewash, and at times their whitewashing is not acceptable. You you just can't accept it. Even if I was a member, I'd be going, oh God, this is obvious whitewashing. It's, it's that bad. Or they uh, use uh, circular logic, and they start at the topic, go way off the topic, and end back at the topic again. Not covering the topic. That's what you get with FAIR. But at least BYU is even more honest. They're even more honest than FAIR. They're hoping you don't hit the BYU site, to be honest, uh, there. Because BYU is more honest. Whether intended or not, sometimes what the letter does is simply overwhelm readers with so much negative information that they're thrown into a panic before really taking a deep breath and in... No, they're not overwhelmed uh, intentionally. This information is overwhelming. It is. It doesn't matter what the information is. Soon as you hear Joseph Smith was not honest and that the Book of Mormon may not be true, as a member of the church, you, from those two words on, you start going into panic mode. You go into anxiety mode. You start getting overwhelmed because you were taught to revere and emulate Joseph Smith. You've been taught, and Benson said it, you saw the clip in there. So Benson said it, if the church is not true, Joseph Smith was either a prophet and the Book of Mormon's true, or the Book of Mormon is not true, and Joseph Smith was a prophet. It's one, If either of those aren't true, then the church isn't true. And I'm paraphrasing. So I'm paraphrasing. And past church leaders have said the same thing. And that's why members of the church go into overwhelmed sensations and go into panic attack and go into anxiety attack because what they believed and grew up on as true and bore their testimony for years every Sunday and to their friends and to their uh, member friends and their non-member friends and their family is in question with evidence, with strong evidence. What the hell do you do? You panic. You get overwhelmed. I did. Every single one of us who left the church went through that feeling. I cried. I bawled. I couldn't sleep. I was devastated and heartbroken learning this stuff. This isn't something. I didn't laugh. I didn't roll around. I was devastated. I got angry. I got bitter over this stuff. Someone who was sat on a pedestal I was lied about. And here was factual information that I could prove it. Here was sources coming out of LDS journals of members who were members of good standing where their families had kept the journals and released it. We had history books. History books. We had court documents that were found in 1970. Court documents. Church doesn't deny the documents. The only defense against the documents is they aren't that legible. Yes, they are. We can easily read them. And I've done uh, uh, shown them on my uh, one of my other videos on the 1826 trial of Joseph Smith. They're very legible. That's how we know about the trial and how much the judge of the bail have even charged and what the charges were. Very readable. We have this information, but that overwhelms members because what Joseph Smith was held in, uh, on trial and the church knows about this and they don't deny it and they actually defend it by claiming that there's even uh, more famous people than him doing the same thing? Honestly, guys, honestly, you wonder why he says, and let's go back here and listen to what, what he says. This isn't what we do to these. This is what the church does to the people. ...does is simply overwhelm readers with so much negative information that they're thrown into a panic before really taking a deep breath and investigating individual claims. Yeah, that's exactly what happens because it's not what we do to them and it's not what's in the CS letters not intentionally doing. It's presenting the issues the church are very aware of well of. Presenting the issues they know of. Let's hear what the church has to say. Let's hear what Jensen has to say. 
I think we we chose to emphasize the strengths. Sorry, it's not Mark Jensen. It's uh, Marlon uh, Jensen. Marlon, sorry, my bad. The what we felt were the more relevant parts of our history and our doctrine. Okay, I broke that up. So let's go back and restart. Sorry, my bad. Let's hear him without on breaking this. Is the strengths? I think we we chose to emphasize the strengths the what we felt were the more relevant parts of our history and our doctrine to the neglect of some things that have come home to bite us a little bit because it whoa we've neglected things that have come home to bite us a little bit could that bite us a little bit that come home to bite us a little bit uh the ces letters presentation of things that are uh, uh contentious sources within the mormon faith and members discover that could it be that's what bites them in the ass because they get overwhelmed and they get scared and they get terrified? My best friend is going through this right now. My heart breaks for her. I'm so angry with the church because my heart bleeds for her, guys. It does because of stuff like this. She and I were taught Joseph Smith was way up there. Second to Jesus Christ is Joseph Smith in the Mormon church. And then you start hearing this stuff and then... I didn't even have this when I left. I didn't even know any about the CS letters. This was nowhere as around for a decade after I left. So these the church members talking about this stuff was nowhere as around when I left. I had none of this. I had to go through this heartbreak, devastation, pain, and confusion overwhelming on my own without the church supporting me on this. So, and my friend is so terrified to go ahead and hear any more because what she has heard is nothing. It's like, I can't even take my fingers apart. It's nothing that she's even heard. But it's enough to have her overwhelmed. If she even saw the CES letters, that would be the end of her. So, because it is so packed with factual information. So, Mr. Jensen, what do you have to say more? It appears now to some that they were covered over. We under... Okay, so it appears to some that was covered over. So... I had him use the word whitewash earlier. He said whitewash in the first clip. Now he's using covered over. So he's trying to be a little less, uh, he's being coy. Let's just call this spade the spade. He's being coy because members are watching this one. So before it wasn't members watching it, before it was Mormon podcasts uh, where he went on with John Delane and he knew members weren't going to be watching it so he could use the term whitewash. Here, members were watching it. He could not use the whitewash word, so he used cover over. Same word. He's playing friggin' semantics. Understandably, have not spent a lot of time. Okay, let's hear another uh, church apologist. Over. We understandably have not spent a lot of time in the past worrying about these issues because our mission is to promote faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because our mission is to promote faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. True. I, I will debate not true faith. Not true faith. And we'll use this for another video. They want to promote faith and obedience and membership because 10% tithing is a lot of freaking member when you have like 14 million uh, members on record. A lot of money. Outside of their billions of dollars they own in different interests and uh, stocks and equity. So, But tithing is a big income as well. So they don't focus on, uh, you know, history and truth. They've been too busy uh, promoting faith, according to uh, this uh, guy here, Snow, church apologist. But as the information age is now upon us. But as the information age is now upon us. As the information age, which is nothing compared to what I had to go through on the information age, there was like this much when I was trying to uh, uh, verify the claims I heard. There was this much. Now there's this much in CS letters out there. The best source is CS letters because it does tackle the issues that we have all faced over generations. This is stuff that we have all faced, faith uh, questioned. Our crises went through it based off of that stuff. Mine it was the exact same thing. That's why I wanted to know what CS letters was about 10 years after I left and I got back into the game. So, and yes, I got back into the game because I was losing friends uh, to the uh, from the church over the LGBT Prop 8 issue, and they pulled me back in. I didn't want to get back in. I got pulled back in. So, <clears throat> Stephen Snow is admitting the information age. The last 10, 15 years, the information that has come out that they can no longer skirt around, they can no longer hide, they can no longer admit to, but whitewash has now surfaced and has caused a faith crisis in the church like never before since the split of the church with Emma and Brigham Young. 
So if the RLDS, the Reformed Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, no longer go by that name, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That is, since then, this is the biggest faith crisis since then. So let's listen to the information age issue. But as the information age is now upon us, we feel with all of this information out there, we owe it particularly to the rising generation. To well, we owe it particularly to the rising generation. So those old bogeys like me and my parents and my dying off grandparents, by the time I get to my grandparents' age, they're going, I'm going to be dying off and the next generation, my kids, your kids if you're members, and your grandkids are going to be the next generation being taught the history and new doctrine of the church. What we used to hear as weird doctrine, it's the same cycle. They target two generations uh, uh, down the road, so by the time the old fogey like us die off, they have a new doctrine and a new sustainability till it happens again and repeat the process. And this has been their process all the time. Now they're just having a harder time doing this because the information age and people like me are out there to expose it. Provide uh, uh, good, reliable information uh, about these matters. I yes, fair, fair. That's what they're ta trying to talk about. They are trying to promote fair. So they are not trying to promote good, reliable information. They're trying to promote fair where they have their explanations to things they used to deny. They used to deny a bunch of this stuff. When I left the church, a bunch of what's on fair was denied as anti and never happening. So Joseph Smith was claimed when I left the church that he was falsely accused for being a seer. Falsely accused. So that he never did it. So I used to, I grew up with Joseph Smith using a seer stone hat in the early 80s church video. I will look for it. Actually, hold on, hold on. Okay, guys, this is coming from the uh, LDS uh, Saints History. This is a church, uh, another of the church's sites. So let's hear this. As I'm talking about, I grew up seeing the pictures of Joseph Smith in the hat and the video. Long time, church art tended to depict the translation of the Book of Mormon as Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery sitting around a table, sometimes with the gold plates out on the table. But that's not really the best match for what we know about the translation process. What do the historical sources from those involved around the time? Actually, and they're not even, they're not even admitting, we have pictures from early days where Joseph, even earlier than these pictures, where Joseph Smith is using the earliest pictures Joseph Smith's using the hat, and we'll, we will see that here. Tell us about the translation process. Well, first of all, Joseph Smith explained that he translated the Book of Mormon through the medium of the Urim and Thummim by the gift and power of God. But he didn't explain further than that. So what about the seer stone, for instance? What, what was its involvement in the translation process? So Emma Smith, Joseph Smith's wife, and Martin Harris, his friend, and David Whitmer, his friend, who were around during the time of the translation of the Book of Mormon, said that he used a seer stone to translate parts of the Book of Mormon, as well as the Urim and Thummim. And Martin Harris explained that Joseph Smith started using the seer stone instead of the Urim and Thummim for convenience. Wait, so what might that mean for convenience? Well, that's a really good question. We're not really sure what that means. We're not really sure what that means. So we're not really sure what that means. But if you think of the Urim and Thummim, the and just make this clear here. This is one. <clears throat> this is one of the uh, sources Saints Unscripted is asking you guys to check out. These are the sources they're telling you, and they're telling you. Well, we really don't know. We really don't know. Well, and how are you supposed to know? If they really don't know, how are you supposed to know? We know. We know because we have the sources. They are citing the sources. So we have art, art, and we're going to get to this art and the depiction uh, of it. Descriptions that are given of the Urim and Thummim, it's described as two clear stones in a go. rim like glasses, okay. the rim. You guys know, I'm not targeting investigators right here. Members, you know what the Urim and Thummim look like. You know where they are. Let's get to the main point of this. And puts them in a hat, which is the way he used a seer stone. So if he uses his... And, and, the church admits that he did this. In the 1826 trial of Joseph Smith, 
My video has a link down there in the description where the church fair, F-A-I-R, fairlatterdaysaints.org covers this and admits that he did so. They admit it because his testimony says he did so. So they cannot deny it. So on the fair website, they're contradicting what this says right here. With this little screen uh, here, you see in my corner? So that's what we're watching. They are contradicting fair. This is a fair apologist. So they are contradicting themselves. They cannot get their stories because according to him, they just don't really know. But they do know enough on their website to say that Sally Chase was a bigger scryer, a bigger stone seer than Joseph. So what's wrong with what Joseph did? Because Sally Chase was bigger than he is. So what they're explaining is stuff they know. What he's talking about here, and we're going to go back and we're going to listen to it from a few seconds before. What he's talking about is how you use a seer stone, how Joseph did, and how they admitted on uh, Fair's website that he did as well. But what's the big deal? Because Sally Chase was a bigger uh, seer than he was, and Joseph Smith had other contemporaries at the same time. So what's the big deal that he did? And this is how you used a seer stone. The church knows how it is because they admitted Joseph used them. Ram and puts them in a hat, which is the way he used a seer stone. So if he uses his own seer stone rather than the Yermathumum, he can put the Yermathumum and the breastplate away somewhere safe and just use his seer stone. And All right, but there's a problem with that, guys. There's a problem. They don't deny the hat. So let's not even get into that horse shit. The church doesn't even accept it. So they contradict. See, this is why there's a reason for transparency, because they can't even get their story straight. Depending on who the audience is, is dependent on the information they give. So, dependent on the audience they have is dependent on the information they give. So, I'm going to skip over her, because we've already listened to her in a clip. I sent this to my friend. Yes, I did send this to my friend, because she is struggling, having a faith crisis struggle right now. And she feels horrible for the way she's feeling inside and feeling like she's betraying the church and her family. And I played this clip up for her. I, um, cause I was planning on the CES letters, even without Saints Unscripted. I was planning on the CES letters without them. And this was going to be my next video, not even the LDS F LDS that pissed me off while I was getting ready to prepare for this. So I did that. I took a snippet of this. I've watched all this uh, 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 video that we're watching and I took this clip and showed it to her so she could have some comfort and understand she is not the only one. We've all gone through it and the church acknowledges this pain, this that we, this pain that we're experiencing when we're questioning. So we don't need, that's why I know what's being said. Let's go over here. And that you didn't know. One of the problems we have in Mormonism is that we've loaded too much into the Okay, and this is FAIR, FAIR Mormon Conference, the apologetic branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, almost five, it has been five years ago this month. Five years ago this month. Let's go back. Mormonism is that we've loaded too much into the truth cart. And then when anything in the cart starts to rot a bit or look unseemly upon further inspection, some have a tendency to overturn the entire cart or seek a refund for the whole lot. We've loaded so much into the truth cart, largely because we've wanted to have the same kind of certainty about our religious claims, down to rather obscure doctrinal issues, as we do about scientific claims. Obscured doctrinal issues? Obscured doctrinal issues like Adam, God? So, plural marriage? Just to name a few? Just to name a few. So, let's go back. Over the years, the church leadership and laity have also done our religion no favors by putting more in the cart than the cart could possibly bear. Many of the things which trouble people are things that we probably should never have been all that dogmatic about in the first place. Things, basically, do you see the whitewash and sugar coating that this guy is doing? So basically saying we kind of, you know, got too much doctrines over the years. Joseph Smith and the church has given too many doctrines and changed them over the years. So to conform. So that's what he's saying. And maybe we bit off too much trying to give either denial at first. And then after denial, then we start whitewashing it too much that it wasn't able to be acceptable. And we have seen the last clip that we watched. The last clip that we watched, we saw 
the church give three different explanations to the same issue. So depending on the audience is dependent on the answer that they supply you. Do you get that? Depending on your audience. So this is a talk. This is a talk to LDS members. So this is a talk uh, by the scholars. They have an LDS audience, so they have to use soft words. They can't just come straight out and use the blunt words. They have to use the soft words because the soft words help soften the blow. So it softens the blow. And when I say it softens the blow, it's some people don't really question. And if they do question, oh, well, okay, it's not that big of a deal because they said it's not that big of a deal when it is big deals. Adam God doctrine was a huge damn deal. I think that the church remains strong. It has to reconstruct its narrative. The dominant narrative is not true. Well, what did R church historian Richard Bushman, Tr Richard Bushman, so this is your, your, your hero, Richard Bushman, I think for the church to remain strong, it has to reconstruct its narrative. The dominant narrative is not true. Give me a second here, guys. Give me a second here. LDS Richard Bushman. Uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Let's use the churches. All right, guys. Let's go over here. Richard Bushman. In this episode, historian, scholars, and author, or scholar and author Richard Bushman offers insights into events related to the restoration with special emphasis on the coming of the Book of Mormon. This is the Church of Jesus Christ at Latter-day Saints dot org. This is, this is one Richard Bushman, the gentleman that we're listening to, Richard Bushman, right here, Richard Bushman, church historian, scholar, and author. Church historian and scholar and author. This isn't Bruce making it up. This isn't AA making it up. This isn't the critics making it up. This is church historian and scholar Richard Bushman. I think for the church, actually, let's hear Richard say it again out of his own mouth. Let's hear the church historian and scholar say it out of his own mouth. I mean, strong, it has to be any of the. Th well, let's get back here to Richard. Attic about in the first place. I think that the church remains strong, it has to reconstruct its narrative. The dominant narrative. <laughs> Is not true. It can't be sustained. So the church has to absorb all this new information, or it'll be on very shaky grounds. And did you hear that, guys? Did you guys just listen to church historian and scholar talking at a fireside? So it can't be sustained if they keep on teaching the false narrative that you guys. That says unscripted is claiming is false narrative. He's claiming CES letters is false. They're false claims. So he is saying that all the proponents of Mormonism, like myself, are making false claims. So we are not making false claims. We are trying to be transparent. It's why we left because of the lack of transparency and the truth we found out. And all we want to be is tra transparent and truthful with you. Richard Bushman, I'm going to play this one more time because this is damaging. This is out of the church's historian and scholar's own mouth. Oh, it has to reconstruct. Attic about in the first place. I think that the church remains strong. It has to reconstruct this narrative. The dominant narrative is not true. It can't be sustained. So the church has to absorb all this new information. This new information they've known about for decades and generations so that's in the CES, le CES letters. That information, guys. That information. That information. It, it, CES covers all the stuff that's of uh, contention and issue. It does. It, it's the number one stop. Or it'll be on very shaky grounds, and that's what it's, it's trying to do. And, and that's what the church is trying to do. Open admission. Saints Unscripted 
sit back, go to these videos, go to these videos, and hear what your church has to say. Just don't go to CES and know that it's there. Don't just go to type into Google CES rebuttal and read, you know, uh, that the church has some rebuttals against it and then get on your show and say, yeah, I'm aware of CES letters. Of course I am. I, I'm aware of it and it, it, it's garbage and this is why. No, this is why you are wrong. This is why I am coming after you and your channel because your channel isn't transparent. It's not teaching correct information. It is teaching incorrect information and leading members astray and using testimony to try to keep them as members. Richard or uh, Richard Bushman here. Richard Bushman is being very honest about the situation at hand and telling you guys, you members, the church is trying to change and get onto par and up. And that's why they have fair. That's why they have fair. They're not even being honest. At least they're being honest to cover the topic, but they whitewash it with fair. That's the next step. We've already been told by uh, Jansen earlier, fair apologist and historian, they need to stop the whitewashing twice. Two different words used, whitewashing, covering it. So covering it, we was talking in a fireside to members, BYU fireside. So uh, using whitewashing, sorry. So a mosquito, don't want that coming after me. Whitewashing it when he, using the word whitewashing, when he's talking to uh, Mormon Stories podcast um, uh, host, John Delane. So, and what it's trying to do. So let's hear what Richard has to say on uh, the issues that we bring up in CES letters. Because these are the issues we bring up in CES letters, guys. It's a strain for a lot of people. Uh, okay, let's people go back especially. again. Uh, older people especially. But I think, I think it has to. Okay, sorry. Uh, older people especially. But I think, I think it has to change. I, I think it is a strain on the members. It's not that CES letters is intended to overwhelm you and give you anxiety attacks. It doesn't have to. Anything you discover on that church is going, whether it's CES letters uh, page or someone else. So, or the church's own fair. I have another friend, not just my best friend. I have one other friend who's in the processes a few months ago of uh, wanting to leave the church. Came to me. I told them to go to fair before they came and talked to me. I told them, go to FAIR, read FAIR, read what your concerns may be, and then come to me and ask me for my side of the view. And I just gave them a few things that they're going to run across in FAIR, and that scared them so much. That scared them so much and put them into an anxiety attack and overwhelmed them that they said they could not even go to FAIR. If that's what they're going to be seeing on FAIR, they could not go to FAIR right now and read that. They could not do that. They had to wait for a bit and steal themselves and get used to the idea that they're going to hear criti uh, criticism by the church on Joseph Smith itself. So this is what we're dealing with. Yes, the church is admitting that there is a problem with crisis and overwhelm and anxiety with the members and they have to change this by changing their history. So to the honest history. So this isn't AA saying this. This isn't, you know, uh, Palmer saying this. This isn't, you know, uh, when I say Palmer, Grant Palmer. This isn't Sandra Tanner. This isn't any other, you know, El, uh, John Delane. This isn't uh, Brian Dolan. This is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints official employee speaking on behalf of them. I think that the, the Church as an institution changes the historical narrative. The historical narrative is based upon um, archival research, documentary finds, historical... His oh, sorry, it wasn't Mark, it's Robin Jason. This is the clip where I, he uses whitewashing. Another scholar uses whitewashing instead of covering. So this is the perfect example I said they give different narrative to different audience. The first Jansen gave one narrative. Uh, the other guy, uh, Snow, uh, used cover up uh, or covering. So stuff, uh, uh, Robin Jansen here, Robin Scott Jansen uses the white word to wash again as well. Historiographical theories, whatnot. Those change every generation. There's always new things coming forth. And I think that uh, as I see things, church leaders, church members are grappling with new historical understanding of, of not just Book of Abraham, but all of its history. There, it's not new church understanding, new historical understanding. They are learning the past history, the true past history that people like myself are trying to expose and get out there so their members know what they believe in and why they believe in. So not that's why we're not against the members. We aren't. We are there for the members. We want them. We are trying to give them what these guys say they need to have. So that's what we're trying to do. 
we're trying to give the on white wash the version that has been known for time immortal since the lds church first started this is what we're trying to do it's not new mormon history you guys have to learn it's old mormon history you guys have to learn about learn about and as a historian i think that's great uh, i i think that uh whitewashing history is is not ideal holding up some of the past individuals placing them on the pedestals is not ideal and just to let you guys know when i did the 1826 trial of joseph smith this jansen right here robin jansen is the article that i use his article on joseph smith where he admits to uh, joseph smith that i use in a peeper stone where he says sally chase was a bigger seer uh, than he was so it's the big deal mark or uh, mark robin jansen admits to a lot of this transparently even though it's a little whitewashed and he says we shouldn't be whitewashing stuff he's still whitewashing it he is he still whitewashes some stuff though he's pretty darn transparent that you can see where the whitewash is it's pretty transparent the whitewash is the justification the justification sure he did sure he did but 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 so and it's this gentleman here this gentleman right here who wrote one of the two articles i use finding nuanced faith means offering a nuanced narrative and i think that that's going to be challenging because we have had narratives in the past that uh, uh, are tied so closely to uh, members testimonies yes your old narrative the narrative that you've changed so it's less offensive because joseph smith kept on change <clears throat> changing the narrative before he's uh, he has death the narrative that changed like uh, polygamy like the priesthood uh, and the seed of cain how many of you guys really get brought up that uh, black people and native americans anyone of, uh, who aren't caucasian are the seed of cain the mark of cain it's stuff like that that they are trying to get away from and they're trying to change the narrative to and they're trying to now get to a different uh source and this is the stuff that you know we're coming across on uh saints on scripted let's go back to saints on scripted this is the narrative he's claiming is overwhelming people because CS letters is intended to try to overwhelm you and confuse you and question your faith and trick you. This is the stuff that he's trying to claim. And that's fairly understandable as the average person might not know how to go about researching these topics or... Yes. See, and this is why, this is why I needed to combine the two together. Because he's trying to tell you guys to research it, but he's not being honest. He's not. Because I'm showing you your church apologists, your church historians that are paid by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints First Presidency. They are called and paid. I'm sorry, buddy. You, you're not a paid member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Apologetic and History Group. You are not. You're not their spokesperson. You're like me. You're just an everyday, average day Joe. That's all you are. And you're telling people to go to the sites. Yes, Please go to BYU.edu. Please, guys. Yeah, Jesus. See, Jesus said, yeah, listen to him. He's, he, he's begging you to go there. See, Jesus, I'm not lying, buddy. So you, you're on my side. Go to there at LatterdaySaints.com. Go to the Mormon archives. Go to the Joseph Smith Project. Please, please go to these talks of the church apologists. Go to their books and see what they say, depending on what the audience target is that they're targeting. Please do it, please. Or may not have the patience for it. Ain't nobody got time for that. Some of the information in the letter is simply true. Some, as far as I can tell, is patently false and hopefully- No, it's not. It's not false. And the church does cover on this. So they cover on this and I covered on some of it with the Heartland uh, model. If you go to my Heartland model video rant, so it's an hour, just all, I think that one's almost, what, was that one my hour and a half or my two hour one? I think it's my hour and a half and some. Anyway, sorry, back on. The church admits to some of this. The church admits to some of this and where they don't admit to it is they say, we just don't know where. That's all they say. They don't deny it. They don't say it's a controversy there's nothing so let's go back here and listen to what this guy says when the church says they don't know go back to my heartland video it's in there it is simply true some as far as i can tell is patently false and as far as he can tell 
as far as he can tell, they are patently false. Yes, as far as he can tell, because you haven't done the freaking information. You haven't. I can tell by your... And if you are, then you are intentionally deceiving people. If you have done the homework and the research and you're saying this, then you are intentionally deceiving people. And I believe you are intentionally deceiving people. This is why I am coming and calling you and your hosts out. So, because you deceive. Not transparency, deceive. Hopefully those are honest mistakes. And I think some lacks important nuance or leaves out additional relevant information. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. First multiple first vision accounts. Multiple, ah, ba, 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 ba. I cover a lot. I cover a lot. Church doesn't deny it. Church does not deny it one bit. So that's in the CES letters. Church doesn't deny it. It's on the fair website. Go to my um, my video on uh, my very first uh, video I have of true Mormon history. I cover uh, the first vision and the four official accounts. Official accounts. The church admits the four official written accounts that Joseph Smith had scribed. There is nine accounts the church admits to, but they're not all official because some of them are hearsay where people have written down saying Joseph Smith said it as Joseph Smith preached it. Journal entries. Church accepts them as legit, but it wasn't something Joseph Smith trans had transcribed himself personally by an official transcribe. I cover this on my video. The church does not deny this. The church actually changes some of it around, like uh, Joshua the Jew. They say the 1826 uh, version of it, was, or was it 26 or 28? I think it was 28. So uh, the 20, or no, sorry, it was 1825 version. It was before the trial, the 1825 version, a few years later. So uh, the church openly admits, uh, they just call him a scholar from the East, someone from the East. His name was Joshua the Jew, and they claim that his scholar, his scribe, wrote it down. No, it wasn't. It was Joseph's scribe who wrote it down. That's how we got it. It was Joseph's scribe. So it's things like this that the church whitewashes or lies about. But they don't deny the event took place. They just lie about how it took place. But they admit to it. So see guys, CES Letters is not garbage. It's not rubbish. It's not anti-Mormon literature like this guy claims and the church tries to claim. I'm showing you the proof. I'm giving you the church apologist, the church prophet, the church historian's comments directly. Countering this claim from these guys countering it it takes a lot of familiarity with these topics to be able to recognize where things might be out of place yeah yeah and that's why i so sorry i should have been on the other side so yes and that's why i beg you guys i implore you guys please go to these sites that the church owns and checks them out because a lot of it is so obvious what they are doing to anyone if you're questioning, if you're questioning, maybe if you're not questioning, you go and you read, you have no issue with it. It might seem a little strange and weird. Why are they saying this? But it's not an issue. If you're questioning and you go there, you're going to see it's a major source of contention and that it doesn't match up. It doesn't jive. There's an issue there. The church has an issue within its own comments. So, and this is why, this is why I keep on going to videos like this. This is why I'm dealing with these topics. This is why I can't let them go. Because you members, you investigators need to know the transparent reality, not the transparent whitewash reality, not the denied lies that these guys are claiming like I just showed. Let's go back to church leaders, apologetic members paid by the church. These are the paid branch of the church for defense. The CES letter is emblematic of this all or nothing approach to religion. The letter is nearly a perfect inverse of the version of Mormonism it is reacting to. Yes, it is. It is. And see, this, this was put up by CES Letters. This video is here to show what they did was not malicious and not an attack and not, you know, what is being claimed. And this is what's being claimed. You heard. You heard what St. Don Scripted said. He claimed it's lies. He's claimed it is an attack. You are now hearing the fair claiming the same thing. Let's pull back. You are hearing fair say the same thing. The ES letter is emblematic of this all or nothing approach to religion. The letter is nearly a perfect inverse of the version of Mormonism it is reacting to. Yes, we are, we are reacting to it because it's the history. The true history that you heard leaders say is Richard Bushman said, 
this is the history Richard Bushman said we've been hiding we have not been honest about and we need to because it's hurting us go back and listen to Richard Bushman talk this is what this gentleman right here he is talking about the stuff that Richard Bushman is admitting to this is the Mormonism we have problems with because your Mormonism today keeps on evolving and you have not noticed it twice you have heard your church scholars say and why say church scholars that's the apologetic branch of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints fair you've heard two scholars say how they do this they go and they target two generations i said it first and then they come they target two generations because by the time they get to that second generation and it's applied people like me who once believed in a different gospel who once teached a different gospel are old or now dead so and the next generation uh, two generations down have learned a new gospel not the same gospel so in 20 years 30 years 40 years from now people if the church is still around people are going to be talking about this as a different gospel as what he said our generation right now let's go back apply this to two generations down you heard you guys heard two different apologists say they are targeting a different generation they are targeting the newer generation so because our generation needs to go our thought needs to go our thoughts are dinosaurs and this here what richard busham was talking to this is what this we all are. or nothing approach to religion the letter is nearly a perfect inverse of the version of mormonism it is reacting to and in 40 to 30 to 40 years what we're reacting to right now so for current events like the lgtp or gbt issue is going to be the same thing they're going to have apologists saying that you guys are reacting to issues like other people did in the past you know that's what they're basically saying we're bringing up issues of the past so because what your children are going to be learning is completely different than what we learn that's you know it's a sad reality jeremy runnels may have written the letter but it was actually an inevitability someone sometime somewhere was going to write that letter yes they were yes they were saints unscripted he did not get on uh, reddit with his buddies and decide to come up with this letter there had everything in that letter every damn thing in that letter has been a source of contention for members for generations before ces letters was first written in the 2000s i left in 2002 so ces is 2013 i left 11 years before i have read authors who uh, were not anti so who were not you know uh, excommunicated for sinning so that were prominent authors from prominent mormon families pioneer families who had learned the truth and discovered the truth research in church history in a pro positive way and came across this and their faith went through crisis and they could not accept the truth of what they learned they could not accept what they were once believing same with me same with ces letters he says it was only inevitable before someone came out with this type of document because it's been a source of contention and a problem for the church for a very long time and it's not going away because it was the obvious response to a certain style, tone, and mode of Mormonism that culminated in the highly doctrinaire, no retreat, no surrender positions taken by certain church leaders and members, especially in the second half of the, of the 20th century. Okay, do we want to go back and listen to that or do you, uh, we won't go back. You can go back and listen to it. Let's get on going here. Let's go back, you guys go back and listen to it we have brought all this up it was inevitable to bring this all up because church leaders did teach this in the past were dogmatic about it in the past members were dogmatic about it in the past as correct church factual doctrine and history that's why we focus on it because it was he is telling you why oh ces rebuttal by saints on scripted did you go through this material buddy I'm not going to go past any more on this link. This link's down in the description. You go back and watch the whole thing. I'm only halfway through. This will be a three-hour damn video. It's not going to be a three-hour video. 
the church has just told you why these videos are here. So they just told you. Unscripted. Unscripted. He just told you. He just told you. The stuff that you say is overwhelming and false and we just throw at you guys intentionally to overwhelm you isn't done. It's stuff the church just had in their doctrine. Once upon a time they believed and were dogmatic about the leaders. And not only were the leaders, but so were the members in the second part of the church. The 1900s on. The 1900s on. We are not, we are not here to try to lie to you guys. Your own church leaders are admitting the stuff to we are. So. Please don't make the mistake of thinking that a few pages or paragraphs on a topic are all there is to it. The letter even strongly urges readers to go out and do their own research. I- Yes, so do I. So do I, because it's stuff the church is transparently admitting to you. You're watching it. You saw it. Mr. Jansen up at the pulpit talking to the other scholars and historians are telling us why people like myself, people like uh, Jeremy, people like uh, Grant Palmer, people like uh, Dolan, you know, websites like Ex Mormon Worldwide, so websites like CES. They're telling you why, so because we are telling you to go to the, the, your sites. We are telling you to go to your own sites because it's out there. We're not lying. We strongly recommend you that you go there. We are not here to try to destroy your testimony. We are not here to try to attack the church and you. So we're here to try to make you transparent of your church, to understand why you believe what you believe and how it has changed. And if you want to continue to still believe, that's up to you. But if you choose to believe, you leave because you know it's not the same what you were told about. Let's continue on on Saint Sound Scripted. We'll finish off with him. Echo that invitation. Please take the time to do your research. Educate yourself. Some people. Yes, yes, yes. Saints on Scripted. Educate yourself. Obviously, you did not watch the video from CES with all the church uh, leaders and scholars and historians. Obviously, you didn't because I'm using it to rebuttal you. I just used it to rebuttal you and prove you wrong. Disprove you wrong. CES Letters is not an anti-document intended to target, will overwhelm, and bring people away from the church. People look at these issues, come out with their testimony intact, have a more informed faith, and carry on. Some people... Not, not true. I know many who have left the church based off of fair. That's why I send people there. That's why I send people there. I know more people who left based off of fair than they have off of people like myself. That's why I do this. This is why I do this. Because FAIR says a lot more than I could ever say to damn themselves. People like Jeremy might look at the same issues and choose a different path. History is messy. Humans are messy. Every religion has its own batch of controversial issues to grapple with. Oftentimes, those who leave our faith only find a fresh batch of tough questions in the next faith they join. Yes, they do. Correct. They do. So they do. There is no disputing that, Jeremy. There's no disputing that, and that's why some become atheistic at the end. So, like myself, because there are still sources of contention in the other face that I could not reconcile. <clears throat> I don't lie. That's why I became atheistic. Jeremy. So, did not put anything out there that was not already out there for generations that the church avoided. So, until tr the church came out with the fair uh, website, so they avoided this. If they did not avoid it, they outright flat refused to admit that it happened and said it did not happen and we've lied. They called us liars. So Jeremy is calling CES uh, letter, or letters a lying document, a deceitful document. He's saying that Jeremy is out there to deceive you guys. You watched the church leadership. You watched, um, let me pull up who is the current church prophet now. Sorry guys, it's been a while. Current LDS prophet. Okay, yeah, so it is Russell uh, Nelson. That's why I thought Nelson was the, uh, for some reason. So, yes, the last prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, while a general authority, came out and said the same as we do. Nothing we said in CES letters is not known by the Church and has not been a source of contention for the Church since the 1800s. That's why we've had splinter groups from the Church. That's why we have people like the uh, Heartland uh, model within the church, believing members in the church. 
So if you're not familiar with the FLDS, the Fundamentalist uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they split off when uh, in the 1890s when Wilfred Woodruff made the proclamation that polygamy was done away with. They think that only Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and John Taylor were prophets, and after that, uh, Satan took over the church from that time period. They don't even acknowledge that John Taylor started the ending of polygamy. So although he was a believer, he started the end of it. On BYU.edu, uh, uh, e -D -E go check my FLDS verses. Jeremy, I'm issuing you a challenge, my friend. Let's sit down and have a podcast talk together one day. Soon. Let's talk to each other, because obviously you think you know stuff. You think you do. I want to know what research you do. I want to ask you what research you do one-on-one, -on -one, because this research is either not done, it's not done, and you're putting out false information, which is just wrong and horrible to be deceitful, or you've done your research and you know the information, and you're still putting out wrong, deceitful information, which is absolutely even worse and disgusting. So let's sit down and talk one day about how you come upon your information. And I will tell you how I come upon my information. And no, it's not wiki. So a lot of it actually comes from your own suggested church source sites. Yes, it does. So let's sit down together, guys. Let's sit down together. Let's talk about it. Let's be completely honest about stuff. Let's not horseshit this one bit. Let's not church up what is. So if they can't handle it, that's not my problem, man. That's not my problem. So not at all. So I don't see how this matters. All I see is someone who is putting out videos, who speaks on behalf of the church, and is not giving correct information. You need to stop, my friend. You need to stop. You need to be honest. Until then, this is the AA saying keep it real. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Peace out.